This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, back to the dormitory. <coughs> Easy there, Michiru. <coughs> Don't lose your balance, honey. <laughs> What's up, Michiru? Practicing your courtship behavior in preparation for, preparation for mating season? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Now we're always... <laughs> you blow up one school, and all of a sudden you're known as the guy who blows up schools. Ain't that just the way it goes? Don't be mean. Hey, it's not all bad. Remember how depressed you were about summer vacation ending? Now you've got another week. As Chizuru said, our present lack of a school building doesn't mean we can stop holding classes entirely. At the second meeting yesterday evening, she explained that Mahama Academy would be temporarily renting a nearby building that had previously been used as a commercial cram school. But it seems some relatively extensive maintenance was necessary to bring the infrastructure up to the necessary standards, so we ended up getting a one-week emergency extension of our summer vacation. Yeah! Of course, considering the limited amount of time Chizuru had to prepare for this demolition, I doubt anyone else could have gotten things up and running even that quickly. So, why were you practicing your war shout? <laughs> Consciously refraining from any comment on Michiru's interesting choice of words, I glance around the lobby. Sure enough, something unusual immediately catches my eye. Now that you mention it, the dorm seems really clean today. In other words, this is the work of... I'm glad if you've reformed from, reformed from your slut ways, Sachi, that's good. You were not the one who I considered to be a slut, though. Wow. Isn't that just a braid? <laughs><笑> Guess you have a point. I put a respectable amount of effort into maintaining the dorm in Saji's stead, but unlike her, I was acting out of necessity. When you've got someone who actually enjoys cleaning for its own sake, you'll naturally get a more thorough, attentive job. Somehow the place feels genuinely more pleasant to be in. Hmm? That's right, folks. <laughs> if you're if you have kids, make sure you compliment and encourage them to clean. It'll make them want to clean more. If, maybe. It'll work for some kids. Aww. They did, Sachi. Even if you don't believe it. Sachi told her classmates about the tragic accident that scarred her childhood. But not about the way her parents had abruptly grown distant and disinterested. Oh, so she told the abridged story. Without knowing that part of the story, I suppose Michiru's reaction is perfectly natural. I mean, it won't necessarily make them love cleaning, but it'll definitely make them more willing to clean. 
さ自分でも言えるんだけどやっぱりサチにやってもらった方がビシッと決まるのよねわかりましたそういうことでしたらこの小峰サチ喜んでみちる様の髪を言わせていただきますあ、oh, that's cute はい決まり I want to see Michiru with a braid instead of twin tails. That could be interesting. But they're not going to show it to us. The instant Sachi agrees, Michiru grabs her by the hand and drags her up to the second floor. Oh, hey, Principal! What are you doing here? Oh, if it isn't Chizuru. Is it about the way I pronounce principal? Because it's just a joke. <laughs> She is upset about me calling her principal. <laughs> In other words, you want me to reserve Chizuru for bed? Wow, bro, really? You say something? Her expression suddenly dripping with displeasure, Chizuru turns to fit her face away from me like a sulking child. She's been oddly cranky lately. Maybe it was a bad one this month? What? Wow. Really, dude? Really? <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, glad you're here. I know I've caused you a hell of a lot of hassle recently, and I wanted to apologize. <laughs> here, it's a $5 Culver's Gooth card. Enjoy it. <laughs> well, I guess I've gained a little more perspective on all of this after the fact. But when all's said and done, the plan would never have gotten off the ground without your cooperation. I'm trying to show a little gratitude. Then maybe stop acting like a dick. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Don't know about that. But at the very least, I think she's gotten free of those laws that were binding her. That was just Act 1. There are still four more acts. No! <laughs> Thanks, but you're wrong. I just gave her the chance she needed to wriggle her way out. Her rules were a defense mechanism. Before she could accept her own feelings, she had to see that system fail. She had to lose something precious to her. For that to happen, she needed to have something precious to lose in the first place. And Sachi cared enough about Mahama Academy for it to qualify. In other words, the real credit for her change has to go to this place. And everyone in it. What's with the detached tone, Chizuru? You're on that list too. Pretty near the top, in fact. Not to put too fine a point on it, but every student in this school is a live grenade. And not only did you accept them, but you've been juggling skillfully enough that nobody's lost a limb yet. Don't you think that's worth a little recognition? I mean... It's not, <laughs> it's not for lack of trying. Yumiko has tried to stab several people now. Most of them me. Well, all I'm saying is you should try to have a little more confidence in yourself. With a small sigh, Chizuru smiles wryly. Seems I've managed to blunder obliviously onto yet another landmine. Yeah. Keep it up, Principal Tachibana. We're counting on your skills. With a girly little pump of her fist, Chizuru strides out the front door. Resolved Sachi's problem, huh? Hope she's right, but... Hey, Sachi. Hmm? I recognize that little sound effect from the first time we met her. Finally noticing the soft voice calling my name, I turn around to find Sachi tugging on my sleeve. Makes me a little nostalgic for our first meeting here. Bro, what kind of shirt are you wearing that it makes that sound when she pulls on it? Hey, Sachi, what? Already done with Michiru's hair? Okay, I, I need to see this. Uh, I don't think that would qualify as twin tails anymore. A triple tail? <laughs> a, a braid with three cords is not easy to break. I see. 
Oh, Michiru, just how pitiful can one human being be? Wow, rude. I mean, she puts the POW in principle. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that assessment. Yeah, I am not sure if she's mentioned this to you, but we're acquaintances. Nothing else to it. Yeah, that's normal here in America. I've been calling you Sachi pretty much from the moment I transferred in, you know. Uh, look. ゆうくんの誠意ある対応のおかげで、学園長さんとはただのお知り合いだということは分かりました。ですが、内外からモテモテの彼氏さんを持つ私の不安は収まりません。What? Preemptive countermeasures? This better not go where I think it's going. Just like that, she marches decisively off, towing me alone by the hand. Uh, hold on, Sachi. I like the apple transition. Oh, hey, it's the fruit of Grisea. <laughs> All of that title is just referring to that one apple. As we enter her room, Sachi cautiously surveys the area and then nods to herself. Um, are you going to make me dinner? That's pretty cool. Safe from what? Okay, I choose curry for dinner. Illicit activities? Don't tell me. Just gonna have, have my mouse ready when I need it. Oh yay, it skipped it. Good, it skipped it. Hooray. Although I don't like how it's night now. <laughs> A little before midnight. <laughs> Jeez Louise, how long have you been here? I feel Sachi stirring awake in my arms. Oh, you fell asleep in her bed. That's that's not okay, bro. What, up already? <laughs> Apparently a bit dazed, she blinks her eyes repeatedly in evident confusion. <laughs> Yeah, day's practically over by now, though. You can just go back to sleep if you want. More or less. What about it? Well, that's just not true. I mean, at the very least, you braided Michiru's hair. Smiling happily, Sachi cuddles up against my arm and hugs it tightly. Aw, it is cute, but... No, bad. Bad, Yuji. Pure, straightforward affection is always a pleasant thing. But when it's coming from someone you care about in return, pretty much nothing else compares. Hmm? What's that? I say no, but I bet Yuji say yes. Only if I only if I propose here and now, and we get married here and now. <laughs> the expression on Sachi's face is placid, but something in her tone of voice seems earnest, even pleading. I don't think she's just playing her slightly pushy girlfriend character right now. There's something else to this. For a moment, I hesitate to reply. Sorry, Sachi. I'm immune to Bambi eyes. Apparently a little unnerved by the delay, Sachi looks up into my eyes and presses for an answer. It's such a characteristic little gesture that I can't help but smile reassuringly back at her. No, fine by me. Of course he would say that. Sharing's a bed is easy enough. Um, you say that, but... Smiling in relief, Sachi slowly closes her eyes and nestles up against me. Wow, she fought, fell asleep in literally half a second. And within seconds, I can hear her breathing and take on a quiet, regular rhythm. Wait, are you already asleep? 
Sachi, or not Sachi, uh, Yuji, you, you gotta get a new shirt, man. Your, your previous shirt is a little loud, and not in terms of colors. I mean, like, literally loud when you pull on it. <laughs> I tried poking her cheeks, though, as a little experiment, but get nothing in the way of a reaction. Sachi, you need new cheeks if your cheeks are making that much noise. <laughs> well, I guess she did work pretty damn hard for my benefit today. In recognition of her gallant efforts, I suppose I can overlook this lapse in discipline for the time being. Get yourself some rest, Sachi. Mumbling a few pointless words to my snoring girlfriend, I reach out and gently brush a few strands of hair from her forehead. Everyone's gonna know. Watch Machina be like, I set up a security camera in the hallway, and I saw Yuji go in, and he didn't come out till the next day. I wonder what they were doing in there. <laughs> Early the next morning, I snap awake to the sound of someone breathing heavily a few inches from my ear. <laughs> Sachi? I turn my head toward the irregular sound that roused me. Sachi's lying at my side, squirming in her sleep. It takes me a few seconds to remember that I agreed to share her bed last night. He just wakes up. Why is there someone in my bed? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> Sachi seems to be having some sort of a nightmare. Her breathing's rough and ragged. From the look of things, I should probably wake her up immediately. Sachi. Hey, Sachi. <laughs> Sachi, I made waffles! <laughs> when I quietly call her name, Sachi opens her eyes with just a sliver. Literally so much a sliver that you can't even see. You awake? But instead of responding to my voice, she just gazes vaguely over at me. Sachi? new, is it? I just gave her a considerate wake-up call, and now she expects me to play along with this cutesy sleepyhead act. Some nerve. Seems I've been too lax on the girl lately. Time to reestablish a little discipline. <sighs> What's all this then, headmaid? You've forgotten your morning duties? Her body quivering with surprise, Sachi reflexively reaches for my pants like a well-trained guard dog ordered to fetch a bone. No, that is not what I said. I respond with an instant karate chop to the crown of her head. With a dopey little yelp, Sachi's sleep-fogged eyes snap fully open. You finally conscious? Spare me your wah. If this was NCO Barracks, you'd be running five laps around the grounds by now. But it's not. <laughs> You were tossing and turning in your sleep. Have a nightmare or something? Hmm. True enough, her little groans weren't particularly dramatic. Might just have been a run-of-the-mill bad dream. Have to say, though, I'm a little surprised you're not a morning person. Oh? Why is today any different? Well, that's nice. And it's kind of our fault. Stop pushing the blame onto me every time you embarrass yourself, you cheeky little punk. Oh my gosh, this is so cringy. There's a vaguely expectant expression on Sachi's face as she delivers this line. Her newfound aggressiveness on this front reminds me pretty strongly of the pushy little kid she used to be, but at the moment it's a little hard to celebrate. No, I think I'll pass. I don't dislike the whole Master of the Mansion role-playing, but I'm enough of a lust-crazed monkey to start screwing first thing in the month. Or I'm not enough! <laughs> I mean, Yuji strikes me as someone who could be enough of that. I'm not enough of a lust-crazed monkey to start screwing first thing in the morning. Good. Good to have at least something like that. Sachi's always had a habit of clinging stubbornly to certain misconceptions, but the trend actually seems to be accelerating lately. In some very weird ways. Is this my fault? Well, 
An attractive proposal, but I want to take care of my daily running first. Rolling out of bed, I proceed to straighten my appearance a little. It, it's called run. <laughs> well, you don't really need to, but... Amine happens to be coming down the stairs from the second floor just as we leave the room. Our eyes meet. Of course this would happen. Instantaneously evaluating the approaching danger, I turn to my side and issue preemptive orders. Emergency situation, Sachi! Take her into custody! Sachi circles smoothly behind her target, binds her thumbs together with a bit of nylon cord, and then pushes the knee sharply against the back of her right leg. Dang, Sachi! Amine is forced to her knees, both arms effectively immobilized. Truly graceful, confident movements. Reminds me of a well-trained professional operative at work. Reminds me of her when I was her age. Hmm, seems like you've been keeping up with her daily training. <laughs> Too bad, Amine! <laughs> Very well, you have permission to speak. I know you. There was a possibility you'd get some funny ideas about us leaving the room together and start squawking. I acted to neutralize this threat. Well, yes, but that's beside the point. I'm not going to fall for your leading questions. I'm the one conducting this interrogation. Who sent you after us? Is this Machina's doing? What, really? Oh, you should have said so in the first place. Come on, you can't tell me Amine wouldn't have posted on Facebook instantly afterwards. Hey Marty, how's it going? Uh, it's not new hoodie outfit, it's old new hoodie. <laughs> we, we saw this in our beach date. But yeah, it looks nice on her. Oh, I've got four even better Gospels for you, Sachi. They're Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> I still say we... Nah. Finally coming to her senses, Sachi retrieves a pair of scissors from God knows where and carefully snips the nylon cords, binding Amine's fingers. God has a capital G. <laughs> but, if you weren't shadowing us, why are you up and about this early? Fair enough. What, just economizing on your food costs? Makina's gonna sleep till 10. See, they're even treating Makina like she's a, an 8 year old. That's <laughs> what she is. <laughs> With an energetic pump of her fists, Amine bounds out of the dorm in pursuit of her bargains. Well, can't let Amine make us look bad. Let's get ready. I mean, if you don't catch bugs in Animal Crossing, Marty, you don't really need a net. That afternoon, halfway through her routine laundry duty, Sachi begins to spread out pens and paper on the table. Getting some studying in while you wait... Yeah, what has happened? Dear aunt and uncle, how are you? I'm doing okay. Guess what? I have a boyfriend now, and we blew up the school together. <laughs> oh, wait. You probably heard about it on the news. <laughs> right, now that you mention it, you were adopted by your dad's brother and his wife, weren't you? Aww. That's nice. <laughs> but you guys know the rule of visual novels. If they don't have sprites, they oh, don't matter to the plot. <laughs> Their own daughter, huh? When someone ends up adopting a niece or nephew, problems of neglect and abuse are sadly common. Yeah, unfortunately. But from JB's information, Sachi's aunt and uncle were decent people who'd never managed to have a child of their own. I guess she was fortunate in that respect. 
<laughs> Sachi in a nutshell. Do you want to help me do chores? I promise it'll be fun. I wish that's what she was like. That would be far more enjoyable than what just happened. In that case, I guess there's no reason to sugarcoat it. Might as well tell them how you're really feeling. <laughs> Don't write that! <laughs> Although it is the truth, sadly. Good thinking! I'm sure your uncle will send us a celebratory box of rubber. This is not good. This is very uncomfortable. Okay, this is a joke, right? <laughs> she writes that to her uncle. Uncle sends a package. She opens it. It's like a spring-loaded pie that goes in her face. Remind me why I started playing this. I didn't know it was going to be like this. I expected action and, like, save the girl adventures. Not... Not cringy sex role-playing. <laughs> hmm... Well, I did more or less get the sense she was kidding around, but you never can be too careful with this one. If I knew it was going to be like this, I probably would not have played it. But I, I'm in it now. I have to at least finish this route. That's not it. I'm more concerned with what you're writing about me. Your first love, huh? My first love, Barney. <laughs> I love that TV show. It honestly feels a little awkward to hear that, but it's hardly unpleasant to know that she had feelings for me even back then. No, they don't, Marty! I've played a plenty of VNs, and they really aren't that way. Kanada's exception more than the norm. The Ace Attorney series is not like this. Neither are the Leighton series, or Hotel Dusk, or Ghost Trick. But while we're on the topic of Sachi's past, there's something that's been weighing on my mind for a while now. Specifically, her mother. In a persistent vegetative state ever since the accident, she's still lying in that hospital bed. Oh, also, Doki Doki was not that way. I mean, that was creepy in a different way, but... Sachi has to be aware of that fact, but she's never shown any intention of paying a visit. Or even mentioned her mother in the present tense. I can't help but wonder how Sachi feels about her parents now. What she thinks about the cold way they treated her before the accident. That's one part of the story that's still mostly a blank. I should really have had... I should have wikipedia it before getting into it myself. Yeah, I probably should have. I was worried about spoilers. I just heard... Again, I heard about this game through the Fruits of the Literature Club Doki mod, and that was cool, and it wasn't like this! At all! It was action! <laughs> and genuinely, like, cool character interactions. Not... not this. Okay, Sachi, mind if I ask you a serious question? And it's... when we actually get into, like, the interesting story of their ba the characters' backgrounds, and the uh, genuine action sequences, I actually really like it! I think the writing in this game can be very good, but it's also ver just very cringy. Nah. Eh, I guess. Ace Attorney is definitely considered a visual novel, though. But yes, it does have it does have more gameplay than a usual visual novel does. It's a statement, not a question. Sachi's expression is suddenly very serious. That's right. On the day we destroyed the school, you said they abruptly turned cold. Did something happen between you and your parents back then? Nothing happened? Yes. 
私の話を聞いてくれたり休日になれば一緒に遊んでくれるというようなこともなくなり金型を作る機械の音が一日中鳴り響く家で一人ご飯を食べるということが多くなりましたそして Why is it playing the happy music when she's talking about her unpleasant childhood? 自分の頑張りが足りないせいだと考えて私は勉強も家の手伝いもそれまで以上に頑張りましたでも私がどんなに頑張っても二人の反応が変わることはなかったそういうことです I see. From what I've just heard, it's easy enough to arrive at a reasonable conjecture. Sachi's parents were just too occupied with work to give her the attention she was craving. Their coldness was probably simple exhaustion. But I can still remember the way Sachi used to talk about them on the playground back then. It's not hard to imagine how hurt and unhappy she must have been. Even so, I remember you saying that you loved them very much just a few weeks ago. Are those your honest feelings? Sachi averts her eyes, clearly hesitant to answer. There's no doubt that this is a painful question for her. But Sachi's relationship with her parents was the root cause of all of her suffering. Until she finds some sort of a closure about this, I haven't saved her in any real sense. See, I, I don't. Mm. I see. The words have the ring of truth. Right now, I think Sachi understands her own feelings with absolute clarity. In that case, maybe helping her escape the law she imposed on herself was enough. Maybe, in breaking free of that defensive shell, she's found something like normality again. Sorry for asking you an un unpleasant question, Sachi. <laughs> Sachi's words and tone convey something very close to absolute trust. I respond to her earnest feelings by reaching out and gently petting her head. Thanks, Sachi. Yeah, see, that's as lewd as it should get. <laughs> but if you're that sure of your feelings towards your parents, I guess there's nothing for me to worry about. Go ahead and tell your uncle that you're happy. Sounds like it's true. When you're done writing that letter, let's go drop it off together. <laughs> Best part of this game is Sachi's singing voice, though. Her freshly completed letter in hand, Sachi trots all in a step ahead of me. I've come to enjoy hearing this song, knowing that it means she's in a good mood. The gentle flowing melody inspires relief and contentment. I guess even Michiru can be a valuable source of information every once in a while. So, Yeba, Yuku, a Konosaki o Skoshi, Tatokoro, ni Chisa na Koen Garu no Shitei Masu ka? Yeah, happened to pass by it a little while ago on my way to work. So, it was a nen desu. Totte oki no jo ho de Yuku o Odoro ka se yo to mo te ita no desu ga. That's high quality intelligence in your book? Hai. Koen wa. Sachi, you really are something else. I love you more than anyone else on Earth. No, more than anyone else in the universe. As I parrot the corny line, I wrap my arms around Sachi and hug her tightly. Uh, hey, Sachi, uh, you, you planning to say something here? I really wish I could interpret that as a joke. That said, it's kind of a relief that she enjoyed hearing it. I've been fully prepared for the possibility of something like, I was only joking, Yukun. That's rather nauseating. Blech. Guess it was worth the gamble. You're overestimating me. I didn't beat you at extreme typos, did I? 
I don't think you'd win the chin-up competitions now. I can raise my chin in the air quite a lot. What, is this back when we were kids? <laughs> now I'm ugly. <laughs> I'm not a particularly happy about the cute thing, but... Sounds like we played some pretty fierce games back then. True, I've got a pretty strong impression of you as a complete tomboy. Yeah, that's gonna limit your options on marrying people, right? Shoe kicking? No, I remember that in the flashback. If you say so. Seems like Sachi remembers those days pretty vividly. But unfortunately, my own memories from back then are still pretty indistinct. At this point, that strikes me as a bit of a shame. Well, when we've, go f when we've both got some free time, maybe we can try messing around at a playground again. <laughs> How would that look to people in there? Easy there, Sachi. Yeah, I'm a little irritated that I can't remember those days as well as you. Making some new memories strikes me as more productive than sulking about it. Maybe not in the playground, though. Mind telling me why you're writing down the exact time all of a sudden? Am I under arrest? Oh, boy. I see. Very prudent. It seems you've got a good grasp on my personality. Hmm. Well, so much for the last minute. Sorry, too embarrassing escape route. Swinging arms back and forth in evident good cheer, Sachi marches along at my side. Seeing the sincere smile on her face, I can feel my chest growing warm. Wonder if my master used to feel this way when I smiled at her. The thought brings a small, irreplaceable smile to my own face. First things first. Let's get that letter to the post office. Sachi's cheerful mood would last the entire day and well into the night. Right until the moment we fell asleep, nestled against the warmth of each other's bodies. 